One of the hardest questions I get asked as a medical doctor is why? Why did this happen? Why did dad have a stroke? Why is my wife suffering from dementia? Why does our child have cancer? Now often I know the answer to these questions. Perhaps the illness runs really strongly through the family and the person was unlucky enough to inherit. Sometimes I can make a pretty good guess as to cause, looking at my patient's lifestyle and circumstances. But sometimes the cause of an individual's illness is elusive. Medical doctors and scientists have spent decades looking into causes of disease. And in recent years, one signal keeps getting stronger. Air pollution. Air pollution is now recognized as a leading cause of illness and premature death in human beings. The evidence for this is so strong and so incontrovertible that the World Health Organization recently dramatically tightened their recommendations on preventable air pollutants. And the biggest preventable cause of air pollution is fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. Each year, just under 9 million people die prematurely because of the air pollution coming from fossil fuels. That's an absolutely staggering one in five of all deaths worldwide. Air pollution also causes disease and disability throughout the human lifespan. To see how, let's follow a typical human through their life. We'll call this person Annie, and Annie's being born as I speak. Even in the womb, Annie was at risk because air pollution increases risk of miscarriage, being born too early, too small, or with birth defects. As an infant, Annie is at risk of caught death and disorders of brain development, including, many studies suggest, autism and ADHD. As a small child, Annie has asthma and she's at risk of childhood cancer. Both illnesses increased by air pollution. She might not make it to age five or get to go to school because of all the world's children who die under age five, a quarter of them do so because of pollution in the air that we breathe. Now our Annie will make it to school, but she won't do as well as she should have because the effect of air pollution on her developing brain is to reduce her IQ. As a young woman, Annie's very health conscious and she chooses not to smoke, but she'll still be at increased risk of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, emphysema, osteoporosis, kidney and liver disease because of pollution in her air. In her 30s, Annie will be ready to start a family, but she'll have difficulty conceiving because air pollution reduces fertility. As she gets older, Annie's skin, eyesight and brain will all age too fast because of air pollution. She'll be at increased risk of having a stroke or developing dementia and may end up coming to see a neurologist like me. So, we now understand that the answer for many of my patients is that their illness comes from air pollution. And air pollution is unavoidable. We all have to breathe. The average human being loses over one year of life to air pollution that comes from fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. Personally, I want that year back. So imagine with me a world without fossil fuels. In that world are healthier, smarter children, living much healthier, longer lives. Now we've already begin the, begun the transition to that world with the move away from fossil fuels towards renewables. And an incredible health bounty awaits us at the end of that process. But there is an urgency to this that has nothing at all to do with air pollution. And that's because fossil fuels through greenhouse gas emissions are also the cause 
of climate change. We're already at 1.1 degrees Celsius above baseline, and we're likely to hit 1.5 when Annie is a teenager. Continuing to burn fossil fuels at our current rate will take us to two degrees Celsius by the time Annie is 30, if not well before. These fractions of a degree of global heating will have profound consequences, not only in our world, but also in human health. In the short term, the biggest consequence for health is heat waves, which are happening more often, lasting longer, and getting hotter. Extreme heat by itself can kill, but as it heats up, our emergency departments also see more heart attacks, more strokes, more kidney and lung disease. There are more complications of pregnancy, including stillbirth. We even see an increase in suicide. Particularly at risk from heat waves are the over 65s, children, and anyone who works outside. It's going to become dangerous to work outdoors in Australia for whole weeks at a time in our summer months. And that's because by the time Annie is in her 30s, a hot summer's day for her and for us will be 50 degrees Celsius. Fossil fuel driven climate change is also causing our bushfire seasons to lengthen and to become more intense. 2019, our hottest, driest year ever, we saw Australia's first ever mega bushfire. We watched as millions on the East Coast breathed the most toxic air in the world. This killed hundreds of people and hospitalised thousands more. Before Annie has reached her 20s, the conditions that prevailed in 2019 will have become Australia's new normal. In the longer term, climate change is causing our dry areas to get drier and our wet areas to get wetter. Extreme weather events like floods, droughts and cyclones are becoming more extreme. We are turbocharging them. The effect on agriculture is that crop yields are declining. And this, over time, is going to threaten global food production. The combination of extreme weather events, temperature rise, food insecurity and sea level rise are expected to displace over a billion people from their homes by mid-century. This will increase the risk of conflict and threaten global security. An ever-increasing anxiety, fear, depression, anger and hopelessness will threaten mental health. Annie will grow up knowing that her world is becoming an ever more dangerous place. I am a medical specialist, but I'm also a mother. And I have two children who, unlike Annie who is fictional, are very real. And I'm afraid of the future we're creating for my children and for children all over the world just like Annie. And yet, this future is not inevitable. We already possess the technology we need to head off the climate crisis. Our rapid, urgent transition to renewables this decade will protect our health and the health of our children for the rest of our lives and beyond. But it's got to be this decade. Slogans like net zero by 2050 give the mistaken impression that we have 30 years to make a gradual change from fossil to renewable. And the science tells us this is absolutely not the case. We need to aim high and go very fast with our transition. Only that will protect us from the profound health consequences of a hotter planet. But that's not all we'll get in this process because ending fossil fuels will clean up our air. This will be profoundly transformative for human health. Acute and chronic disease will be reduced and we'll get that year of life back. And although there is a, a cost to the fossil to renewable transition, in most countries, this is more than offset by the money we'll save not having to pay the healthcare costs of illnesses which are currently caused by fossil fuel air pollution, 
which in this country runs to billions each year alone. To top it all off, did you know there's more jobs in going renewable than in staying fossil? So, in one process, we can save money, create new jobs, protect our children, safeguard the planet, and dramatically improve our own health. A simply amazing future is ours if we just stretch out our hands and take it. But one thing stands in our way. Just 100 fossil fuel companies are responsible for over 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. And the fossil fuel industry has known since at least the 1980s that climate change was real, that it was happening, and that they were its cause. Despite this, they have spent, and they continue to spend, millions of dollars opposing pollution regulation and climate policy. And so, we keep on putting off until tomorrow what we urgently need to do today. This year, Australia was ranked the worst country in the world by the United Nations for actions on climate change. We lag other countries in the move towards renewable energy and uptake of electric vehicles. We had no emissions reduction target for 2030, and we're actually relying on technology that no one in the world has yet invented to get us to our deeply inadequate net zero by 2050 target. Worst of all, we're still opening new coal mines, new gas fields, and new oil fields. And last financial year, Australia gave $10 billion to support fossil fuel industries. $10 billion. That money could have built us five new teaching hospitals. Instead, we're subsidizing air pollution and climate change. Imagine if we listened to the science and instead used that money to accelerate the transition towards renewables. We might just be the most important people who ever walked this earth, truly. Because how we choose to act will determine not only our own health, but the health of our children, our children's children, and humanity for generations yet to come. And so here is one thing that you can do that will make a difference, and that is to personally divest from fossil fuels. Most people are invested in fossil fuels and don't even realize it. But it's really easy to find out whether your bank, your mortgage holder, your insurances, your superannuation fund, and any, any investments you might hold do or don't invest in fossil fuels. Just type the question into Google, does my bank invest in fossil fuels? Does my superannuation fund? The answer pretty much comes straight up. Your money is powerful and it is 100% under your control. Smart Money has been quietly moving away from fossil fuels for quite some time now. Please take every cent you've got and move it away from any institution that invests in fossil fuels and together, can we turn that stream into an absolute torrent? And then please, add your voice to the many people clamoring for our country to stop subsidizing fossil fuels. As a medical doctor, I've come to appreciate that an awful lot of human illness is caused by air pollution. And as a mother, I truly fear the consequences of a world of unchecked climate change, not only for my own children, but for all the world's children, just like Annie. The deadly link between air pollution and climate change is fossil fuels. When we end coal, oil and gas, our world will be cleaner. Our lives will be longer, our children will be smarter, and we will live healthier from the cradle to the grave. 
So let's take our collective foot off the gas and embrace the many, many, many benefits of our renewable future. <laughs>